I'm Rob from Smart Boat Innovations. In this video, we'll set up temperature monitoring for our engine. This will be our first project using the super useful ESP32 microprocessor. Whilst there are many off-the-shelf Zigbee temperature sensors, they cannot handle extreme temperature near the engine. For this, we'll use this one-wire sensor. This sensor can handle temperatures up to about 125 degrees and is also relatively waterproof. At AliExpress, you can buy a pack of five of these sensors for less than $15. The ESP32 will function as a remote hub equipped with numerous ports to connect to all of these temperature sensors. If you haven't set up an ESP32, don't worry. I have a separate video guide dedicated to that, providing a quick and easy setup. On my boat, I have set up four temperature sensors around the engine to monitor the coolant temperature, temperature near the thermostat, the raw water elbow temperature, and the alternator temperature. This allows me to receive early warnings well before the engine reaches a critical state. For example, the temperature at the raw water elbow for my boat is normally between 38 degrees and 40 degrees Celsius. I have set an alert if it rises to 42 degrees Celsius. This will indicate an abnormal situation such as a worn impeller, intake blockage, or no water flow at all. And speaking of alerts, the alternate temperature sensor is particularly useful now that we are starting to use lithium batteries and then the ability to work your alternator harder. Furthermore, you have the ability to review historical data on engine temperature trends. This feature allows you to track and analyze how these parameters fluctuate over time, providing valuable insights to the performance and health of your boat's engine. So let's get started. is the ESP32. Please watch my previous video about how to set up the ESP32 and connect power supplies and integrate it with Home Assistant. Now I like to use one of these breakout boards when I use the ESP32. Um, it just makes it easier to work with connect wires and sensors and also makes it a little bit less, less fragile. It's, it's much more robust when it's connected to this board. So the pins, you line up the pins and you just push it left, right, left, right, and you leave it in until the pins go all the way in. Just make sure you've orientated the, the pin numbers and the pin names the right way between the ESP32 and the breakout board. So for this project, we're going to use a, uh, a DS18B20 temperature sensor. Uh, it's also called a Dallas because that's the company that originally made it. And it's also called a one wire sensor. It actually has three wires, but the, the data all goes on the yellow wire and the, the red and the black is just the, the power supply. They usually come in a number of lengths. I like to have one as long as possible because you can always cut the lengths off. You also need a resistor, a 4.7 K ohm resistor for this project. Now it doesn't matter how many temperature sensors you're going to connect, we only need one resistor. So we have the sensors, the resistor, and the ESP32. Now I like to uh, mount the ESP32 inside one of these boxes, especially if it's going to go in the engine bay or close to the engine. It just protects it more from dust and oil. Uh, you can put it in here with, with a hot glue gun or screw them in, however you like. Now, if you're going to use, do, put more than one sensor in, usually you can put a couple of sensors into one of these breakout boards, but if you're going to put four or five temperature sensors, maybe there's not enough space and you need to use like a small terminal block like this. So this is how we wire up the uh, temperature sensor. The, we have a positive goes into the 3.3, the yellow goes into the, the P25 port, and the, the black goes into the ground port. Now the resistor, you just bend it the right sort of length so it can go into the the 3.3 and the and the, the p25 now the red the power goes into the 3.3 volt uh, screw terminal if we're connecting more than one sensor all the red wires from all the sensors will go into the same 3.3 volt terminal the yellow, which is the one wire data wire, goes into the, the P25 screw terminal. Again, if we're 
connecting more than one sensor, all the yellow data wires will go into the same P25 terminal. And the black goes into the ground screw terminal. If we're connecting more than one sensor, all the black wires will go into the same ground screw terminal. And that's it. That's all the connections that are required for the Dallas temperature sensor. You also need to have the power supply for the ESP32 as we discussed in the previous video. For this video, I'm just going to show you how we add one temperature sensor. On my boat, I have four temperature sensors around my engine and I just use cable ties to secure them in place snugly against what I want to measure. You have one in the raw water, the alternator one goes against a, a mounting lug, uh, the coolant one just near the, the gauge entry to the coolant and the thermos one, thermostat one just tucked in right next to the, the thermostat. In ESP Home and Home Assistant, we've already have the ESP uh, device adopted um, from our previous video. So we go to the edit and we go down to the end of the, the configuration file. Now to make life easier, I have uh, a sample code I've put on my website. So we can just copy it from there. We go to smartboatinnovations.com and at the top, we go across to code and we scroll down and scroll down to the temperature sensor Dallas YAML and we have the configuration here. I've got the configuration for four sensors so we can either copy it or we can download it if you like. From here I'm just going to copy it and go back to ESP Home. The YAML, go to the very end and just control V, paste it. Now since we're only going to use one temperature sensor for this, this video, I'm just going to delete the other three. So we just have one. So just select it and delete. Just be careful in this file. YAML is very sensitive with spaces and indentations. So you've got to have the right number of indentations, which are two spaces usually. So it has to be exactly how I have it. We go up and save it and then we just go out from the editor what i always do when i change a configuration yaml i go to three dots and just validate it to make sure i haven't made any mistakes and then about it says it's configuration is valid then we go back to the three dots and we do the install and we're going to always do it wirelessly so ota since we'll connect wirelessly to our ESP32, it first it compiles the, the code to put on there with the configuration. I've sped it up, so, uh, but here we have the, the success. So it's compiled it, it's successfully compiled it. Now it's going to upload it to the board. And as you can see, the upload bar is going along 70%, and it's uploaded. So the OTA was successful. Now, if you stay on the screen, it will also show you the log file from the ESP. Just have to give it a moment to start up. And see, it's connected to the board. Up the top here, see, it's found the sensor. And that, that's that key. We need to have that key up there. So we do a double click it and control C. We need to use that key. And down here, you can see there's an error because the, the sample configuration I gave you has a another key which which is not found so we don't have to go down to the sensor here and paste in the the address or the key we just selected from our your log file we'll go back out again we validate the configuration is valid and then we install again it's going to install wirelessly i'll speed this up a bit because it takes about a minute But all going well, you should see a green success. And now it's going to upload it to the ESP32, the configuration and code. And it's successful. Now if you just stay on this screen, it's going to then the log output from the ESP32 will come out here. You can see it's found the sensor again, which we know. And now down the bottom, it hasn't got an error because we changed the, the invalid 
address and now it's got the temperature it's 30.1 degrees celsius now we set the sampling rate in that configuration to be every 10 seconds so she one oh here we have we have another one so it's working to add additional sensors you just repeat the steps that we just performed so you connect the sensors to the ASP32, you power it up, you have a look in the log file and it will display that there are found sensors. You copy the address of that found sensor, you then edit the YAML and then you put that address into the sensor definition and you, you then save, validate and install the new configuration onto the ESP32. And you do that step for every single sensor. So now let's add a dashboard. I'd like to create a, a dashboard just for, for all the engine monitoring. So we call it engine. Give it an icon. There's a nice engine icon if I remember rightly. Oh, there it is. Engine. Create. Let's go to the left hand side, select the dashboard. We want to clear it so edit the dashboard start with an empty dashboard and take control so it's all empty we're going to add a card and these these temperature gauges nice to have the actual gauges so we search for this one we have the engine temperature one give it a name so let's say that we're going to put this for the raw exhaust water normally we put the range of temperatures zero to 100 sounds Makes sense and we want it as a needle gauge and severity so we can have the different colors in here so in my case I'm going to put the, the yellow at 30 because the normal temperature is around 30 to 40 and the red we'll put on 42 and just for display purposes those numbers and there we have it we have a very basic gauge um, showing the ex exhaust raw water here on my boat I've I've already have set up four temperature sensors around my engine. Uh, and the engine is currently at, uh, at its normal operating temperature, more or less. Maybe the raw water exhaust, coolant, the thermostat, and the alternator. And we can go ahead and have a look at the history. The one most useful I find is if we go show me, we'll go to the start date and just have a look at last week. And I'll show you the history of the temperatures you had. Um, my coolant it seems to all go up to 75 approximately celsius which which makes sense now since these temperature sensors aren't actually inside the engine they're just touching the relevant parts outside the engine they're not going to show you exactly what the, what the temperature is inside the engine but that's not that important because it's 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 going to be quite close a few degrees off and the most important thing is it's we'll know what the normal temperature is so we'll know that if it goes up by a few degrees there's something going on inside the temperature of the coolant goes up by a few the outside part is going to increase as well so once we have the normal range of temperatures we can then create uh, automations and alerts so here we add a quick automation um, let's check the temperature of the alternator so let's find the uh, Temperature one, which is the alternator temperature. Uh, let's check if it's above 100 degrees Celsius. And the action will be to pull the, the Neo Siren. I mean, additionally, in the future, we can get really clever with this. Another action would be to call a uh, relay to reduce the field current of the alternator. So it, so it cools itself down, but still works. Save the automation, alternate temperature check. And that's it. We have a basic automation. Thank you for joining me today and exploring the incredible world of smart boating. If you found this video helpful and informative, I would appreciate if you hit the like button below. And if you'd like to stay updated with more exciting content on boating and technology, consider subscribing to my channel by clicking the subscribe button. Your support means a lot and helps me create more valuable videos like this. Until next time, hasta luego.